Good evening, everyone. We are the Gratitude Girls. The Gratitude Girls are in the house. Hi, Lori. Hi, Catherine. It's so good to see you today, all blingy and sparkly. <laughs> you too. Mm. I think we should have a little bit of a fashion aspect before we get started for the men and the women. We can do a little bit hair sponsored by jewelry, maybe not sponsored because that's not sponsored, but you know where we went, we can do a little promotion about what we did. That would be sort of fun. Sure. Well, I was thinking it would go along with clients, you know, our topic tonight, talking about how we acquire and come across clients. We're clients of people. You and I are consumers. We talk about the products that we buy and how do we become a repeat customer by results. So I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit tonight about how do we become a loyal client and then how do we attract, keep, and repeat having a loyal client. Seems like a good subject. Let me talk a little bit about how I become a loyal client because I am super loyal. Like, I don't know if I've told you the story, but I get my nails done in St. Catharines for seven years at the same place no matter where I live. So when I lived in Toronto, I drove 110 kilometers to get my nails done and my aesthetics. And I didn't miss an appointment every two weeks. When I lived here, I started to work with them and Rowan was on our show actually, on our Gratitude Girl show. So how did we, how did I become a loyal client. It was the service that I received. As Maya Angelou says, people will forget what you say. They'll forget what you do, but they will never forget how you make them feel. And boy, do I feel special. Seven years later, over seven years now, I wouldn't imagine going anywhere else for my aesthetics. So I'm a loyal customer and client because of how I feel, how I'm treated and the fact that I am always welcomed. What about you? Well, you know what I was just thinking when you were talking is I just noticed that the first time in my life ever, I got my nails done today and I got French manicure <laughs> and we match again. <laughs> I love them. But yes, the same thing. I go to the same lady that I've been going to probably for 15 years. Literally, she's there every single day, Monday through Saturday. But I text her and I ask her because she does, they're not allowed to take appointments anymore. So they only do walk ins, but I don't like to wait. <laughs> so I text her and say, let me know when is a good time to come today. And she'll text me and tell me come now. So, um, so I do that, but I today. I got my toes done. I'm getting on my first plane ride in two days. Um, but yes, the same thing It's you know, you have lo lo loyal, you become a loyal client. I have my truck that I actually just sold my truck today. Can you believe that mm -hmm. my little oh. baby, shopping baby, but the last four expeditions, well, the first one was an excursion and then the next three were expeditions, but I bought from the same guy. Mm -hmm. My dealer is in Houston, Texas, and I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, but because I'm a loyal right. person to my guy, but he does exactly what I want and I'm taken care of. I tell him exactly what I want. He goes, he finds it, whether it's at his dealership or someone else's. And he delivers it to me. I even do my trade. I mean, everything is all through texting. Although today I sold my truck. And so I'm going to actually go a couple months without one since we've been paying two house notes for the last year. And our one house note is going to be upgraded <laughs> since we're re re um, renovating that house. So that house payment is going to triple. And then we're going to be paying for an Airbnb. So, um, and you know, Kevin's my chauffeur, he takes me everywhere I go anyway. So 
realistically, I don't need a separate one, but we're just going to do that for a while because our Airbnb that we're staying at doesn't have a driveway. So you have to park on the street. And, and plus I just really didn't need another vehicle. And I've decided that I kind of like the aviator. So that's what I'm going to get next, but, but yeah, same thing, same lady, same truck guy. Um, the guy that mows our lawn at the Columbia house has been the same guy for years. Our heat and air guy is the same guy. Right. You're loyal. So let's, let's talk about that. These are the people that, so I'm a loyal customer, you're a loyal customer, and then you, then you hire people. And so you're, you're loyal so that they can be part of your, your support team. So in business, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to spend about 15 minutes here and we're going to talk about clients, acquisition of clients, how do we acquire clients, and then what do we do to keep them? And then we'll be asking you to join us in our private dining room, the Gratitude Girls room, where you can come and ask us questions, and we will work with you directly on the spot with whatever it is that you are thinking about. Hopefully it will be along the lines of what we're talking about tonight. So everybody wants to have a new customer. We know that keeping our customers is obviously less expensive because a new customer, we have to put in time, energy, effort, money, and then there's training. So it's better to keep the customers we have than to fire them and go find new ones. But regardless, how do we go and find new customers? So let's talk about so the, cup, the customer that I am to my aesthetic place, I was referred. I called a friend. I said, I need this service now. My girlfriend said, go there. I called. She said, come now. I went immediately seven years later. Little did we know I'm still there. <clears throat> now in the business that I'm in, if somebody says, I need you now and text me the transaction, the service can't be done over text. I can support the service by text, but I am not always able to at the right now moment, especially if I'm here with you, if we're recording, if we're doing a show, we're doing a podcast, I require a schedule. So how do you acquire clients? One way we do that is here we are right here with you. We're with this group of 22 people providing a service that you are happy with. And how do we acquire clients? That person can take it to the next level. Can you think of some other ways that we could acquire clients? Yeah, well, I think also we attract clients, like just being who we are and doing what we do, but showing how we take care of people just attracts more people to us. And that's one biggest thing that I love. And that's what I, what I love to teach, coach, and train on too is, you know, forget Facebook ads and, you know, Instagram ads and Google ads and put money in everybody else's pockets, right? So just attract the clients and be who you are and attract them. And then that makes it even so much better. Right. I love that. Of course, you know, as we say, be you, be yourself, be your unique self. Another way to attract clients is to be consistent with your messaging, so you know that we are here every Monday. Remember what we said about next Monday. We are here every Monday at 8.30 Eastern. You know that. You know that the information is going to remain here so you can come back and watch it. You know that we're going to talk about different subjects that you can use in your business. And we are going to expect, if you wish, to have you in the back room. We expect you to join us. We're inviting you to join us to answer your questions. So we're consistent. There's a system, there's a format. Hop on with us at 8.30, by nine o'clock, you're in the back room with us. And after that, you can decide to hop on some of the other tools that we have or services. As long as you know what we're doing, you can count on it. And that's a really good way to not only keep a customer, but someone can say, you know, every single Monday night, what I do at 8.30, I have, and that means that you can recite that. When your clients can talk about what you do because they're not confused, because you are consistent and your messaging is clear, that's your advertising. Like you said, why pay for 
<clears throat> any ads when your clients can do the talking for us. Like we just did about our car salesman, our aesthetics, our real estate agent, our banker, our investment person, our doctor. We're gonna talk about how great we feel when we're with them and around them. So if you're in the kind of business where you service people, do you make them feel good above and beyond the service? You could be a good technician, but how do you do it? Do you ever go somewhere and wonder why they have that job? So I would say be consistent in your messaging and your demeanor. You know, you could have a bad day, but really not the customer's problem. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like everybody has days, right? And, but the thing is, who do you take it out on? Do you take it out on your clients? You know, do they see the drama in your life or the problems? Because a lot of times, you know, people want to do business with successful people, right? That's who they're attracted to. If, you know, if we came on here talking about this woe and this woe and this woe, and everybody has woes in their life, right? But if we talked about them constantly, then you would be like, oh, do I really want to listen to them today? <laughs> right? And so, I mean, you still, you know, we all have them. We all have issues. But, but the thing is how you deal with it, right? And a lot of times we even talk about our issues on the show, right? To let people see how we deal with it. We talk about it, but then we also talk about what we're doing about it. You know, and like with the gratitude girls, not the coaching part, we weren't doing that yet, but the, the gratitude girls show, and we walked through, you know, when I lost my husband, but it's still, you know, that was very tragic when I lost my mom, you know, and I had nine major losses in a row, pretty much in a two year period, but but still, we talked about that a lot, but we also walked through it, you know, so we all have things that go on and, you know, sometimes it can't be helped no matter what race you are, no matter what financial status you are, you know, all those things, it doesn't matter. Things are still going to happen. Yes. And Lori, we honor and respect the things that we do in the space that we hold for one another, that it's not only sacred, that it's a brave space. So as we've moved, moved our homes, moved our families, we go through that with transparency. So as you are acquiring clients, you're allowed to be human. You're allowed to be taking on something that's amazing. You're allowed to be doing a new project that might take a little bit of your rest period because you're up being creative. Being authentic is, is what we're talking about. Being really you, the real you. So when we meet a new client, we don't know where they're going to come from. Maybe they're going to text us. Maybe there's an email waiting for us to respond. Maybe there's an email and we read it and think, oh, I don't know if I really want to do that. That seems like it's going to be you know, a little bit out of my wheelhouse, or it's going to be a lot of trouble, or there's something that's just not aligning. When you're looking at acquiring new clients, you know, hire a coach. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to put a coach pitch here. Because if you're not sure how to evaluate the incoming work, you might be making a judgment call from the position of you as the technician. And perhaps another perspective, another point of view would be if you take on this level of client and you're working with this level of client, it will raise the bar and it might be more trouble and it might be more difficult. So when you have someone in your corner assisting you to raise the bar, to give your business a breath of fresh air, although it might seem like a lot of work, it could in fact double, triple, quadruple, or 10 times your income. So as you're looking to acquire new clients, have a perspective of where are you going long-term as opposed to one by one. 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. When you look, you know, that's one thing they teach on, you know, a lot of people teach on that on, you know, your goal setting. You want to have different goals. So you want to have your long-term goal. Where do you want to go? And why do you want to get there? And then you break it back and you work backwards and break it down to, you know, so here's your 20 year goal or your retirement goal. And then here's your 10 year goal. And then here's your five year goal. And then, so this is what you have to do in one year. So this is what you have to do in six months. So this is what you have to do every month. So this is what you have to do every week. So this is what you have to do every day, right? So I was just talking to someone <coughs> right before this call, one of my clients, and she was wanting to, she wants to make $1,000 a week. That's her right now short-term goal. And that's another thing that I teach and train on also is make your goals realistic where your mind can conceive them, right? Because if you can conceive it, then you can achieve it. So if you're right now making 300 a week and you say you want to make 10,000 a week, your mind probably is not going to accept that, right? So we set a small goal for her, want to make a thousand a week. Once she hits that or even comes really close, then we can up it to 2000 a week, right? But so right now we set it at a thousand a week. So at a thousand a week, that means she has to make $200 a day, right? So today she made $180. So that's close to her plan. That's close to her goal. So if she keeps that up, then she's going to be at that a thousand a week in no time. And then we can up her goal to a little bit more. Right. I love that. So she's three times in it instead of 10 times in it. So she can triple her income, understanding I can triple my effort, triple. And then she, after that, she goes and adds two more thousand to it. So she's now going to go in five times it from her first goal. And that's a very digestible, easy digestible way to look at it. So when you're acquiring clients, think about what your goal is and how you're going to speak to these new people or companies or whoever your client is. If your clients are people that you don't ever get to meet, not only due to the fact that we're working like this, but if you're in the part of the world where your clients are all over the world, we work on different time zones. Sometimes this is the only way that we get to meet them. We're not necessarily you know, commuting back and forth at this time for client work like that. Think about how you portray yourself like this, because this is different than when I shake your hand or if I would give clients a hug or if I would sit close to a client and have dinner with them. This is a different perspective. So as you are making your client, building your client relationship or making your client pitch, think about your body language. Think about how you sound, where you look. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I don't know if you're looking at me, but I'm looking at you. If you want to think about how you sound, get a little bit closer to your mic. You don't have to raise your voice, but this is how we're going to build our relationship. We have a digital bank and we are depositing and withdrawing from this digital bank at this time. So when you're speaking to your client, maybe it's without video and it's audio only. Think about what Lori does. She smiles, you sit up, get yourself all ready. Hopefully you're not in bed with your feet up on the wall, hanging off backwards, talking to the client because you're at home. Just because we're at home doesn't mean that we have to be curled up on the floor, you know, doing push-ups at that moment while we have the call on speaker. Think about how the client feels when you're making that pitch or that conversation. I can feel it, Lori, can't you? When somebody's talking to me and they're like, hmm, I can sense if their head is down or if their back is straight, if they're standing or sitting. Right. Yeah, you can definitely. And especially, obviously you can if it's on a Zoom, right? Because you can see them. But even if it's on a phone call, I mean, that's so many people do that. I'm, I'm in Zooms a lot of times with several people and 
you know, you notice when the one person is talking, they expect everybody else to be paying attention, right? But then when another person's talking, they're like, and you can see, like if it's on Zoom, they're like going like this. They're checking their emails or their Facebook or whatever, right? Or even worse, they're going like this. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, when you want someone's attention, you want to actually pay attention, right? You And you want other people to pay attention to you. So you might think, oh, it's not that big of a deal that I'm doing dishes while I listen or God forbid, going to the restroom while you're listening, you know, or whatever, but you want people to give you their full attention. So have that same respect and don't, you know, yes, you can multitask, but when you're talking to someone, that's not the time you want to multitask by checking an email and checking a text at the same time. Fine. You know, I still don't think that's even productive either because when you're focusing on an email and you're responding to someone or you're focusing on a text and responding to someone, the same thing. If you give it your full attention, you're going to respond differently than if you say something back in a quick, abrupt way. I'll tell you a story and not, and this wasn't when I was multitasking, <laughs> but it was hilarious. But so we are having our house renovated, right? And so our contractor, I'm the main one that he talks to. And so he texts me, he emails me or whatever, even though every text Kevin and I both read and every email we both read, but still he goes through me, right? So he had texted me something. And so I replied back and I hand, and I always hand it to Kevin to, kind of proofread it, but because some, some things have gotten in kind of a touchy situation. And, um, so we've had to kind of call them out on a couple things. So anyway, so I gave it to Kevin to proofread before I hit send. And so he'll read it and he'll change some things or whatever. So this, usually he just changes one or two things because I teach and train on relationships, right? So I should know how to talk to people. But sometimes people get like up to here, right? <laughs> and so and it could have been other things going on during that day or whatever. But anyway, so Kevin read the text back to me the way he read it, right? And so the same thing, people, one, men and women read things differently. That's how spouses can clash sometimes. But even in business, right, men and women think differently. But also just it's a lot of times it's good to have an outside check. So he read the text back to me and the way he read it back to me, I was like on the floor laughing, but because it was like, like reading it as I said something like so horrible to this guy was still the words that I said, but in a different tone than I typed and Kevin added in a few different words <laughs> and I was like, I did not say it like that whatsoever. And he's like, you don't think that he's going to read it this way? So with that said, when you give something your full attention and you also don't, and that's one thing too, is that a lot of times we, we do that. We like with this guy, we reply to him, but I don't send it. I reply, I type it out, Kevin reads it, and we let it sit there for an hour or two or sometimes to the next day, and then we hit send. So whether it's the email or the text, but the same thing. So you can look at it with fresh eyes. We relook at it the next day or a couple mm -hmm. hours later before we respond to make sure that we're responding in a professional manner and in an appropriate manner. I like that. That's a really good, a really good point. You're thinking and writing and somebody else says, well, when I hear it or I read it, I have a different perspective. So that being said, such great advice. If you don't have Kevin, hire a coach. Oh, only Lori has Kevin. Okay. So have someone else's perspective. 
<laughs> now, Kevin may be getting a lot of phone calls, but he will refer those calls to us and we can talk about a referral fee. But what we'd like to do is have you, have you think about that perspective to really understand that multitasking and focusing give you different results. Poor watered down results. Not that that was poor results, Lori, but poor watered down results if you're multitasking. Imagine making chicken soup and tomato sauce and salad at the same time. That's a diluted way to create those recipes. You really need to focus on it. So if you're sending an email and sending a text, pay attention. If you're speaking to someone on the phone, pay attention, give them your undivided attention. I love that. Let's talk a little bit about why we're gonna go into the dining room of the Gratitude Girls now and what that means when we depart from this group in the next few minutes. Yeah, so if you haven't been with us lately, um, <clears throat> so a couple months ago we started where we are here with you for 15 minutes, usually ends up being 20, 25 minutes, but our plan is about 15 minutes and we teach coach and train on something specific that we are, you know, no fluff and stuff, you know, like when you get a book or even another class and it's an hour long, hour and a half long, you know, or a book that has a bunch of fluff. We don't do that. We give you all the major meat in 15 to 20 minutes. And then we invite you to our private coaching room. So if you haven't done it before, just go to Zoom and then you type in Lori Delk, all lowercase, no spaces, L-A-U-R-I-E-D-E-L-K. And we were, are here with you till, um, till 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern. And so you can hop in with us. If you want something totally private, one-on-one, -on -one, go to gratitudegirls.com slash coaching. And you can see the information there of hiring us for an hour or hiring us for just try us on for size, just to see how that works. But this is small group coaching. So we usually have a couple people in the room. You just hop on and jump in on with us. Someone might ask a question that you didn't realize that you even have until someone else asked it. And then we get to answer it. And so it's a lot, but it's still, it's nice and cozy. It's usually only just a couple people, so. Yes, and I do want to mention one more thing about that. If you have some free time tomorrow night at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, 7.30 Mountain, 6.30 Pacific time, you can catch our show, The Gratitude Girls, on thegratitudegirls.com. So we'd love to have you there. We'd love to have you watch us live. Of course, you can catch the replay. And we're going to have an amazing actress on tomorrow night. You'll see the promotion material little bit later on. So I invite you, we both invite you to not only come and join us in our private room right now, but to come back to come back and hang out with us tomorrow night as well. Yes, awesome. So we will see you then guys. Thank you. Ciao.